Hey there. Welcome to Class Day 2020. Today we're going to take a look at some of the good news from Emmanuel over the 2019 to 2020 school year. I'm sure I don't need to remind any of you that this year has not been normal. But thanks to modern technology, we have been able to keep up with most of the things we usually do. Our classes, our homework, even been able to keep up with most of our friends and acquaintances. But there's one thing that most of my fellow students at Emmanuel have been missing. And so today, it will be my pleasure to share with you the professors of Emmanuel Lutheran College, as I've been experiencing them for the past two months, as we view the traditional class day material that you've all come to know and love with an exciting new twist. Hello, I am Professor Steve Sippert, soon to no longer be president of Emmanuel as I am stepping down this year. This is my brief inaugural address, if you will. I have also been asked to introduce the ninth grade class slideshows, as I am doing now. Hey, I'm Dave Rodebaugh. I was just reading a fascinating book about endoplasmic reticulum. But now it's time for all you kids to get off your snappy chatties for Lori Lau's presentation on the music at Emmanuel. Hi, my name is Josie Nauman, and I'm from Eau Claire Emmanuel, and I will be playing Marceau de Concord by 4A. School. Today I'll be playing Morceau de Concert by Saint Sons. <laughs>
Hey, Prof Lau here. And we have one more class slideshow left. Until we're done with the sophomore slideshow. Then two more slideshows after that. But about these sophomores, let me tell you, of all the classes I've ever had, they're one of them. <laughs> Let's roll the slideshow. Hola, I'm Eric's dad, and I've been asked to introduce Prof. Kranz with the Athletic Awards. I think this is even the real Prof. Kranz. Despite the year getting cut short by COVID, we still had some great moments in athletics this year at Emmanuel. I want to bring your attention, though, first to the box at the bottom. As you can see, it's long been overdue that Karen Johannes deserves a promotion. So we are going to strike the words to the, and she is now full-fledged assistant AD. Congratulations, Karen. The bad news is you're not going to be paid any more, but the good news is you're not going to be paid any less. Many times on class day, we can't announce the spring sports awards because uh, they haven't happened yet. I think this one did, but I'll mention in any way you can see that the, the Nauman sisters did well in track in those two events that are listed. And you can see on the softball page that uh, Lily Meyer and Faith Kazemba made first team last year in softball, and Claire Scherenbeck made second team as a freshman. I'm quite sure we did not get to the baseball last class day because uh, that season was still going on and the voting hadn't taken place for all conference yet. So here you go. First time announced ever. Noah Siddle won first team all conference last year. Congratulations, Noah. And last year, freshman Christian Schaller won second team. We entered our club soccer team in as a WIAA team last fall. For more on that, check out this report. For a few years now, we've had a soccer team that has functioned as a club soccer team here on campus at Emmanuel. Until this past fall, when we graduated up to WIAA level and we started participating that way, we, um, we participated as a JV team mostly. However, we did play some varsity squads, and we had a, we had we had a young team, and it, the team went three and eleven. But Coach Sippert will tell you that the team did a lot better every every game. They improved every week. Speaking of Coach Sippert, you can.
can see that he's working up some new moves to teach his team next fall. Our volleyball team was really good once again this year. Um, last fall winning the Mondovi Invitational. Here's the trophy for that. In all of our team sports, sometimes individuals shine. I really like this quote by John Wooden. And now we're going to go to volleyball first. <clears throat> Our volleyball team went 9-1 and one in the Dairyland Conference again this year, getting second place in conference. If you went back looking through the last 20 years, you'd be hard-pressed to find a program with more conference wins than the Emmanuel Lancer team. And the common denominator behind all of that, of course, is Coach Joe Lau. And that's because all he thinks about 24-7 is volleyball. Don't bother me now. I'm going fishing. As Joe goes fishing, I guess we'll continue with business here. Uh, last fall, Erica Oster and Bryn Schierenbeck won first team in, uh, in the Dairyland Conference in volleyball. And uh, second team honors went to Faith Kazemba and Allison Schaller. The team did great. These four girls seem to shine every night uh, playing really well and getting second place in our conference. In cross country, you can see that Lydia, Andrew, and Levi all earned second team honors at the cross country conference meet. I'm down here in the home team locker room and I'm going to talk about basketball. The girls this year did really well. They finished 14 and 8, and they were second in the Dairyland Small Division. And the boys finished with a record of 17 and 6, and also finished second in the Dairyland Small. <clears throat> it sure smells rank down here. Oh. So yes, both basketball teams did quite well this year, but as far as individual uh, athletic awards, you can see at the bottom of this page, Ben Oster and Emma Miller both earned second team honors, and Ryan Zimmerman earned first team honors. And by the way, these are not divided into large and small. Uh, these are first and second team honorees of the entire conference. And uh, yes, Ryan, if you uh, feel like trying to take me on one-on-one, -on -one, if you're bored or something, uh, look me up. We'll give it a try. But you'll probably beat me because I won't be able to guard you close and block your shot due to this uh, social distancing thing. But otherwise... Hey, Prof Gullerud here. We we're just listening to some for King and Country, rebounding on a trampoline, and drinking some juice. Anyway, I was supposed to introduce the junior class slideshow. Great bunch of kids. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, Prof. Rail here. As many of the students know, if they have an idea for an activity, I'm a good guy to talk to. So that's why I'm here to introduce the activity portion of today's program. Thank you, Eric. We understand that students need more than just classes. They need activities to pass the time. As a result, we have a number of activities in which students can participate. Each one earns activity points, and throughout the course of a student's career, they can reach various levels depending on how many activities they're in. These students have reached the first level. Next level is 60 points, and you see the following students have reached that level. Third level winners reach 100 points, and you see them listed here. These are students that are starting to get very busy. Besides athletics, they also do activities. And here are the fourth level winners. It takes a lot to juggle all the classes and all these activities in addition to sports, but our students are able to do it. This is Prof. Yudi here. Eric doesn't know very much about me, so he wasn't sure what to do for this portion of the program. But he's pretty sure I love his class a lot. Who couldn't? So, uh, yeah. Team 2020. Hello, I'm Professor Paul Schaller, and I have been asked to introduce Prof. Gullerud with this year's Academic Awards. But before we get to that, I'd like to tell you a story about a pianist named Abernakati, who was performing in Carnegie Hall with the New York Symphony Orchestra. After playing a long concerto, they needed to retune before the next act. All of them, that is, except for the star pianist, Abernakati, he refused to tune again. When they asked him why, he simply replied, Abernakati tunes but once. On to the Academic Awards. Thanks, Eric. I have some more good news in the area of academics and athletics. On your screen, you will see the names of students who have qualified for Academic All-Conference, which means they maintained at least a 3.25 grade point average during the quarter in which they lettered in a varsity sport. So we have cross-country and volleyball during the first quarter and basketball in the third quarter. The students will be receiving a medal to commemorate their achievement. This award requires a high level of discipline to balance their time and energy for both athletics and academics. 
Congratulations to the 24 Academic All-Conference Award winners. And before I send it back to you, Eric, I want to personally thank all of the students, teachers, and parents for their hard work and support this past year, but especially this past quarter of distance learning. I know it wasn't easy for you, but I pray that this fall we'll be able to learn together in person once again. To introduce Prof Galu. Thank you, Eric. I'm here on location at the Emanuel campus to share with you some good news about scholarships. I have here sealed in these four envelopes the scholarship recipients. I'll take you on a little tour to show you where these scholarships were earned. Our first stop is the Academic Center Music Room to award the Ruth M. Sitto Memorial Scholarship. Now, Mrs. Sitto loved to play the cello, the organ, and piano. And so this scholarship recognizes a student who has achieved a high level and involvement in the musical arts. The recipient of the Ruth M. Sitto Memorial Scholarship is Anthony Garibay. Congratulations, Anthony. Now, Anthony also plays the piano, cello, and organ. And in fact, he was planning to direct the band this spring in a piece that he arranged uh, called Waves of Praise, which was a musical arrangement of Christian hymns that outline the life of Christ. Now, hopefully, Anthony, you'll get the opportunity to direct that in the near future. Let's head on down to the ball fields for our next scholarship. I'm here in the home outfield of the Emanuel Lady Lancers to award our next scholarship, the Gilbert A. Sitto Memorial Scholarship. Now, Reverend Sitto was an avid supporter of the well-rounded student athlete. And so this award is given to recognize a student who has demonstrated a high level of involvement in academics, activities, and athletics. This year's recipient is Allison Schaller. Congratulations, Allison. Now, Allison loves to play volleyball, softball, and also perform on the stage. She's been in all eight casts of the theater performances and she would love to send a word of thanks to all of her coaches and directors over the years. Allison also really enjoyed serving on banquet committee as well as classes in biology and computer too. Let's head up to the dormitories for our final two awards. Here we are at North Hall, the boys dorm to award our final scholarship, the Joshua T. Snell Memorial Scholarship, which is given to one male and one female junior dorm student. Now these students exhibit qualities such as positive leadership, they're involved in a variety of on-campus activities, and they cheerfully and willingly lend a helping hand. This year's male recipient of the Joshua T. Snell Memorial Scholarship is Daniel Mayhew. Congratulations, Daniel. Now, Daniel works in the kitchen as well as uh, this year he enjoyed serving on banquet committee and also enjoyed athletics such as soccer and basketball. Let's head over to the girls dorm to award our final award. Here we are at South Hall, the girls dorm, to award the Joshua T. Snell Memorial Scholarship to the female recipient. Soraya Williams. Congratulations, Soraya. Now, Soraya was a cook this year in the kitchen, and she really enjoyed serving on activities committee, especially planning the formal dinner. She also really enjoyed playing sports such as 
basketball, and track. That's all the scholarship news I have for now. Back to you, Eric. To introduce Prof. Guller. Thank you, Eric. And welcome to all our viewers from Hull. I have some good news and bad news to share with you today. The bad news is unfortunately Professor Gullerud was not able to join us, and so he asked me, Professor Donald, to fill in for him. Now, the good news is that we have an amazing group of scholars to recognize today. Now, what is a scholar, you ask? Well, my definition of a scholar is one who takes his or her studies seriously every day. Every day. From day one, when they enter campus as a freshman until they depart as a senior. Now, the first program recognition I would like to share with you is the National Merit Scholarship Program. We do have one commendation from 2020 to recognize, and it happens to be your host, Eric Rhyme. Congratulations, Eric, on your commendation. And for the year 2021 program, we have one junior who has qualified for recognition. Congratulations to Rebecca Durst on your outstanding scholarship qualification. Now, let's head over to the whiteboard for more scholar recognitions. Now, for more great news on academic scholarship. I would like to recognize a group of seniors graduating this year with honors, which means that over the course of their four years at Emmanuel, they have worked and studied and worked and studied to achieve academic excellence. Mathematically speaking, this is a grade point average of 3.500. The list of names is behind me and I shall read them individually to recognize their accomplishments. Morgan Bobeck, Sarah Durst, Jillian Gamble, Jaden Caro, Christian Kazemba, Sherman Kettner, Hope Mayhew, Grace Meyer. We also have Josie Nauman, Benjamin Oster, Samuel Rademacher, Eric Rhyme, Allison Schaller, Bryn Schoenbeck, and Zachary Strike. Congratulations, seniors, on graduating with honors. Now, you may be asking, why are there blue marks next to some of the names? I shall explain. I shall explain. Well, this is to recognize the President's Academic Excellence Award. So, the names who have qualified for this, they must achieve a 3.5 GPA, but in addition, they must also score high on the ACT or SAT, in particular 85 percentile in math or reading. So congratulations to Morgan, Sarah, Jillian, Christian, Sherman, Grace, Benjamin, Eric, and Allison. 
Well done. And finally, you may have noticed that our host, his name has been underlined. And that is to recognize the Wisconsin Academic Excellence Award, which goes to the top grade point average of the class for a Wisconsin resident. There is a scholarship that accompanies this award. Congratulations, Eric, and back to you. I would love to have the professor Sharon Beck introduce the segment. Unfortunately, we're running out of segments to introduce. However, knowing these two very intelligent brothers, I can only imagine what it must have been like growing up in their household. So instead of introducing a segment, I've asked for an impression of one of their childhood arguments when they were growing up in the same house. Enjoy. Dan, would you hand me the phosphorus? Not now, Jeff. I'm reading Chaucer. Oh, that's all you ever do, Dan. Maybe, but it's worth more than all you ever do with your chemicals and integrals. That's not all I ever do. Methinks thou dost protest too much. Why, you're so full of hot air. If you were an ideal gas lab, PV would be constant and hot would go down, so T would go up, and that's how hot the air you're full of is. Why, you sallow faced Apple John, I'm taking my Chaucer elsewhere. Good luck with your science. Fine, I'll enjoy my chemical concoction myself. Good morning. I'm Prof. Nauman. Eric has told me that he particularly enjoys my chapel addresses. And since he hasn't had a class with me since ninth grade, there isn't a lot else he could think of to say in this video. As a matter of fact, none of the twelfth graders have had me since ninth grade religion, which is why the theme of this next segment is the twelfth grade slideshow.
in a few days, this position, Dean of Students held by Gus, will become vacant for a short bit of time. Up until last year, however, it was held for quite a long time and done very well by Professor Paul Sullivan. I've known Paul for about 20 years, and during that time I have become quite impressed by the set of gifts that God gave to this man, gifts that he certainly used faithfully to help our students in various ways, especially as he prayed for them daily and applied God's word to their hearts and lives, even in times of crisis. If you haven't done so already, I suggest you read the last article in this May issue of The Spokesman, which describes the life and work of Paul. I think you'll get a better appreciation of what the Lord has done through this man in our ILC classrooms, in morning and evening chapel, and as our Dean of Students for about 20 years, perhaps more. I think I speak for more than just myself when I say that he will be missed at ILC. And to Paul, even as you have said to us, both in person and in print many times, we say to you, the Lord be with you. Professor Paul Sullivan here. Now that I'm retired, I have time for a little light reading. The Dictionary. The MLA Handbook. The Deacon Handbook. If you'll excuse me, I need to go find my Beacon Handbook. Oh, hey guys! Prof Kranz here. I was just looking at some Gershwin music. <laughs> Say, Eric asked me to introduce Louis' manumission. As you can imagine, they ran into some trouble with social distancing. See for yourself. The Ballad of Jan Quarantine The Bard of Bellamar With pomp and fanfare and with hope held dear, so began the glorious year. Twere reunions and meetings, I good friends and old gathered at ye old field house from legends of old. We learners and wizened teachers alike settled quite coolly for new school year's hike. With tests and with turbulence gallant and fair, our learners and teachers finished quarter with flair. With honor and memory and with hope held dear, so continued that marvelous school year. The air turned bitter, but hark, our dear heroes continued to make valiant marks out of zeros. Knights turned into champs, ladies ruled every court. And our leaders and learners did never fall short. Beware, though the tides are steady and still, an evil twas brewing that promised a thrill. With joy and jubilance, and with hope held dear, proceeded the heroes in this fast year. A blight and a plague was on the horizon, but heroes did not know how to let the surprise in. So gaiety and frolicking manners persisted as contests and rallies were held and insisted. Then suddenly and swiftly the dread plague did strike. It hoisted the head of our year on a pike. In ye old field house were wails and befuddled crying for COVID the wicked, the vast, terrifying, had stolen our hope away under our nose so all fled to hiding as quarantine arose. Ache not, for though trying, our heroes continued with the effort and courage which had been imbued. So distance was stifling, and friends had parted, but learners and leaders were not to be thwarted. The plague will die out, 
and our friends will return with patience and knowledge so carefully earned. Thus, on a new day and in a new year, with pomp and with fanfare and with hope held dear, our reunions and meetings, I, new friends and old, gathered at ye old field house from legends of old. From the class of 2020. Where did it all go? Where did it all go? Where did it all go? Back in August, before classes were beginning, I thought I knew what was coming this year, and I was looking forward to it. As a senior, I fully expected to experience one last softball season. Tour choir. One last play. Last robotics competition. Spring concert. Senior tea. Banquet. <laughs> and graduation. Of all the things we planned for at the end of this year, not one of them is happening the way we thought it would. Today, my plan was to be walking up on the stage. Receiving my diploma with all my classmates beside me. Singing our class hymn and reciting our class verse. Well, that ain't happening. Of all the things we planned at the end of this year, not one of them is happening the way we thought it would. Perhaps most significant, instead of all being joined together today, we are spread out all over the country, some of us nearly a thousand miles apart. What joy can we have today? Well, we didn't go through four years of instruction at a Christian boarding school to learn nothing. The lessons we've learned from our time together are the foundation for how we move forward. These past four years, our faith has been strengthened and continually fed in this wonderful Christian atmosphere that God has blessed us with. We have learned that there are many more things to be thankful for than we can count. We thank God for all the workers he has called to bring us up in his word. For parents and grandparents who love and raise us to be children of the Lord. For our pastors, who by the work of the Holy Spirit nourish our faith, with the sacraments and instructions of God's word. For our teachers at Emmanuel, who devote all their time and care into preparing us to be good stewards of Christ, letting our light shine for others. For our dorm parents, RAs, friends, and classmates who continue to grow in faith with us and give us the Christian bonds of fellowship in which we can praise the Lord together. Above all, we are thankful to the Lord our God, who loves us so much that he sent his own son, Jesus, to die for us to take our sins and doubts away. 
but not just our sin, also the sins of the entire world. That is the truth I am thankful for. Jesus lives and our sins are forgiven. We had plans this year, things we were looking forward to doing, memories we were looking forward to making, but God had a plan too. And our short-sighted anticipations pale in comparison to what God has in store for those who love him. Once, God's plan for our salvation put Jesus on the cross, when our best plans would have put us in hell. Now our firm foundation of faith rests in Christ alone, making us sure of the salvation that our God has already won for us. That is something we can plan on. As we continue ahead on different paths after today, we will remember that we ourselves are not alone not separated from each other by mountains and oceans. We are united in one faith, faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the lesson that we are most thankful for. It is a message we have proclaimed every day at Emmanuel Lutheran High School, surrounded by believers, and we will continue to proclaim it in the world for the rest of our lives. In Christ, we walk together with every Christian of every place, of every time, so thank you, Lord. Thank you once again. And thank you, those of you who have cared for our souls. Thank you for building up our faith. Thank you for helping us to realize how blessed we are, even in times of trouble, when our faith is being tested. Today, even though we are not up on the stage singing our class hymn together, we can be confident that we are indeed united in Christ alone. And one day, without a doubt, we'll be together singing praises to him in heaven, long after every trial on earth has been forgotten. Today it may be that many of us look back with regret. But overwhelmingly more, we look back with gratitude, and most of all, we look forward with confidence and anticipation. For no matter what changes in the world, one thing remains true. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Our hope, our joy, our faith, our life, our love, our, our peace, our victory, our purpose, and our eternal hope are all found in one place. In Christ alone. 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 In Christ alone.